That is the very honest and frank first reason as to how I do afford luxury handbags and other luxury goods. Hello there, welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for joining me. Today we're going to talk about money and specifically my money. I get a lot of questions on my channel or DMs and comments about how I afford the things that I'm showing you, how I afford all of my luxury handbags when I'm doing unboxings, how I afford them, how I afford to spend the money that I spend on luxury items because I am the first to admit that sometimes I can go a little bit crazy, especially with handbags. I do have another channel, Amelia Rose Talks, and I talk a lot about money and finance over there as well and business and I would get questions of a similar nature over on that channel as well. So today I thought I would do an updated video because I have talked about this before but do an updated video on how I afford luxury, how I afford my handbags, how I afford the things I have in my life while I would get ready because I thought that would just make it a bit more interesting. So as I get ready I'm going to do a quick get ready with me and talk to you about finance and money as we go along. So as we get started the first thing I'm going to use is I use Dermalogica for my skin. I don't have the best skin Skin. I have always had problems with my skin historically. I had acne and I've had to have laser. So now I use Dermalogica products. They work for me. They're a specific skincare brand. This is obviously not sponsored, but they work for my skin and I try not to mess with that. So I've already used the Dermalogica face wash and now I'm going to use the antioxidant mist and I will link everything that I'm going to use down below for you in the description box today if there's anything that you want to check out. So now that is spritzed across my face, I will next use Active Moist also from Dermalogica. It is a moisture moisturizer that I find isn't too heavy, doesn't clog up my skin, sits quite well with my makeup and I use this morning and night every day. Okay, money. How do I afford what I afford? I watched a video quite a while ago now from Dale from Dale's Addiction and Dale, whenever she made this video on how she affords luxury, because I understand that a lot of luxury YouTubers are, YouTubers are going to get these questions because people are curious. And whenever we're constantly coming on and showing you unboxings of Chanel, well, maybe not after the recent price increase on the classic flaps, but Chanel, and Dior and Fendi and Louis Vuitton and all of these unboxings, it's human nature to be curious how we're able to afford these things, especially if they're people like myself who are not uber uber wealthy and I would be quite a normal person, how we're able to afford all of these bags and how we're able to keep showing you these things. So I understand the curiosity and Dale said in that video and it always struck with me, she said quite openly and honestly because she earns a higher salary. And the first reason how I'm able to afford the luxury handbags that I buy and the other things that I buy is because I earn a higher salary. I earn an above average salary. I checked on Google before I started to do this and the average salary in the UK, Google tells me, is around about £29,500 and I earn more than that. I earn an above average salary and that is a big reason how I am able to afford the luxury handbags that I afford. I am not trying to juggle all of my life being my children and my dogs and my bills and my home and my savings and all of the things that we need on an average salary. I have a quite comfortably higher than average salary and that makes it an awful lot easier for me to be able to put money towards luxury bags and to buy the things that I do and that's the harsh reality of it I suppose and I always admired Dale's video because she just owned that and that is part of the harsh reality and I don't want to sound, I'm sure none of us do, like we're saying, oh well, I earn more than you and that's how I afford it. That's not what this is about at all. But when there is an interest in how we do afford these things and how specifically I afford these things, that is the very honest and frank first reason as to how I do afford luxury handbags and other luxury goods and still I'm able to live because I earn an above ha above average salary. If you have watched my channel for a while and specifically even the talks channel which talks more about finance and business, you will probably know that I am self-employed. I own a company but I am an employee of that company. So although I own the company, I still work full time Monday to Friday nine to five in that company and from that company I am paid a salary. That is my take home salary, that's my very active income of what I earn and on top of that, my husband is also employed full time. He is not employed by my company. So my company is not having to pay both of our salaries. He has his own career, his own job. He works something absolutely unrelated to what I do. I wouldn't have the first notion how to do what he does. 
and he also earns an above average salary. So we're very fortunate in the position that coming into our household, because yes, we do have two children and we do have four dogs and they're all very expensive, but coming into our household, we have two salaries that are above average and that definitely makes it easier to have money for disposable items and disposable income and money to be able to spend on luxury items. I have just put some toner on my face and that is the Skin Perfect Primer from Dermalogica. This has an SPF 30 in it so it also protects my skin from the sun. As I say I don't have great skin, I've had laser on it before and that can thin your skin so I use that as an SPF 30 every day. It also gives a little bit of coverage under your makeup and helps your makeup go on nice and easy. So back to finance talk. So as well as having two above average salaries coming in to the household and that's the first reason and the very harsh reason of how I afford those handbags is that I earn quite a decent amount of money and that's the harsh reality of it. The second way that I'm able to afford those items is that I don't just have that salary as a stream of income. I do have multiple streams of income and I have had a request to do a video on my multiple streams of income and I will do that on the talks channel whenever I have the chance to film it and to go through it and I will make you aware and let you know the different streams of income that I have but having different streams of income and not just relying on my salary makes it a lot easier for me to manage my money in a way that gives me a budget to spend on luxury items and handbags and fun things that I show you on the closet channel here because I'm not having to have that salary stretch and cover everything even with my salary being above average and I will be honest with you and say that it is comfortably above average. It is a good salary. That would not be enough for me to be able to buy the luxury handbags and the things that you see on this channel. If my husband and I were both working the jobs that we do and we were relying on the salaries that we both earn, and bear in mind both of those are above average salary, the cost of living is such as it is now and is so high and the cost of childcare, which is very, very expensive. We also have grooming for our dogs. We have daycare whenever we're both working full time. And that's our choice. Having four dogs, you need a little bit of help with them. We have vet bills. We still have a mortgage. All of those things cost an awful lot of money. So this is why I talk a lot on the other channel about the cost of living crisis and the recession and the global impact of that. Because I do worry about how that's going to impact a huge amount of society because I know we're very, very lucky and I know that we have two good salaries and we're still finding it difficult and we're definitely feeling the impact of the incre increase of those things and the inflation increase and the increase in interest rates and how that's impacted our mortgage. That is impacting our household and I would say that we are in a pretty lucky position. So I do worry about that and the impact of that on a lot of society and I don't want to sound as if I'm being oh patronising or looking down on anyone that doesn't earn as much. That's not the point of this. I am just saying that we are certainly feeling the impact of it and we are fortunate in our salary levels and the reality that means is that if we had just our two salaries and didn't have our other streams of income, I wouldn't be able to be buying all of the handbags that you're seeing on the Closet channel. I certainly wouldn't be able to put that proportion or that percentage of our income into frivolous handbags, because let's be honest, they're handbags. I, so I just couldn't. I could not justify or allocate that percentage of our income to handbags if we were living solely off our two salaries and that's another harsh reality that I am able to do it because we have more than one stream of income we're not having to put all of the money away for fun things just from those incomes but if we were I couldn't buy and show you all of the handbags that I do. Now that I've added my foundation on I use the Clinique Even Better foundation. This is quite light. It doesn't clog my skin too much. I don't feel that it's heavy. I don't feel that it's caked on. This also has an SPF 15 in it. I think it's really important to wear SPF on your face every day even though I don't live in a sunny climate. I still think it's important to protect your skin from the elements. Mine is the Number five, it's a neutral colour. I'm not very tanned at the moment, so my makeup obviously can't be very dark. And I just find that's meant to even and correct. I just think it gives a nice amount of coverage but isn't too caked on. I've been using that foundation for quite a while now. So now we have that on, let's talk more about money. Because we have multiple streams of income coming into our household, that allows me to manage our money 
easier because we're not just relying on those two main salaries. So how we manage our money is the third way that I'm able to afford the luxury handbags that you see and the other items that you see. If you've watched my channel before, you probably know and have heard me say that I do not come from money. I come from a single parent, working class background. I grew up in social housing. My mum was a single parent. She had three jobs to manage and keep going with myself and my brother. She, I don't know how she did it. She's a hero. I don't know how she did it. And that's just the reality of that. I'm not sure I could have done everything that she did. And she made so many sacrifices to make sure that my brother and I had what we needed. We were by no means wealthy. We, we knew that we weren't. And there were things that a lot of other people had that we didn't, but she certainly, we were never hungry. And that's all down to her. But the reality of coming from a very, I suppose, financially difficult background is I learnt at a very, very young age how to manage money. And I am very, very good. I, I, I've just looked at the viewfinder. This this looks ridiculous. Mm -hmm. So I managed at a very young age to learn how to manage money very, very well. And I'm using the little Chanel double-sided mirror. I use that a lot. I use that in my handbags because it's so narrow and thin. It fits in my mini bags really well, but also it's good for putting on makeup just to give me if I need a different angle. And what I have drawn, silly tiger stripes all over my face is the Clinique Chubby Stick, which is for contouring. And then I also have the Clinique Chubby Stick, which is for highlight. So I'll just go above that with the highlight. Now, this is just my everyday makeup. I am by no means a makeup guru. I know very little about makeup. I kind of stick to what I wear. I did do one of these videos before. Somebody had asked me to do a get ready with me and I did get comments in it saying you would be better using these colours or that colours. That's probably right. I don't know very much about makeup. I just kind of use what I've always used and what works for me and what I'm happy enough with the look. I'm sure there are colours and things that would work better for me, but this is what I use on a daily basis. I then use, no, I don't use that. I then use the Charlotte Tilbury bronzer and blusher brush just to blend in the tiger stripes which are the contour and the highlight to give my face a little bit of definition. Back to money. So coming from a very difficult financial background I learned at a very very young age how to manage money and how to make money stretch and how to compartmentalize my money. I learned that if I was going to be able to pay all of the things that I had to pay I needed to be able to manage money and that came from a probably a very very young age because we my brother and I both had part-time jobs whenever we were at school from a very young age probably an age that if I'm honest my children won't have part-time jobs at I I wouldn't allow it I I don't think I think it was born out of necessity and it definitely instilled a work ethic I have said before in many videos I would work at times if left on checked the clock round and can be a bit of a workaholic and I suppose I've always had that work ethic to work very very hard it came out of necessity when I was younger and it's kind of just followed through into my working life and we worked we had part-time jobs from very very young I was still in school I was in grammar school at the time that's secondary school here and I was I had my first part-time job when I was 13. Before that, I had had a paper round. I then had a, a job, I think, from I was 13. I've had a part-time job right through, from 13 right through. And then when I was got older, I obviously able to, was able to work more. I worked through university. I worked through my second university. <laughs> I've always worked. So I learned how to manage money very, very well. And the thing about managing money when you don't have very much of it is you have to be very, very careful with it. And I have always followed through the mechanisms and the systems for managing money from having very little money to now having comfortably more money. Now we are by no means rich, wealthy, none of that. We are lucky to be comfortable 
but we're not uber wealthy. We are not in a position where we don't have to look at our finances. We don't have to worry about our finances, that we can just buy whatever we want. We're absolutely not in that position. We still have a mortgage. We're not mortgage free. We are this year, I have said before in other videos on the Talks channel, we have different financial priorities. So I will still be shopping because it's me and I'm not going to change my personality overnight and I'm not going to suddenly not like handbags. So I will still be buying handbags, but there will be less of them and they won't be at Chanel classic flat prices. If you've watched my Chanel price increase video, you'll know that's not happening. So there will be different priorities this year because just with the interest rates rising, there are different things I want to put money to and I will be shopping less. And that's because we're not stupidly wealthy. We're not very, very rich to the point that we don't have to think about what we're doing. So how I manage my money is that our incomes come in to our accounts. We manage our daily living money all from the two salaries that myself and my husband earn. So out of those salaries, they, they both come into the same joint account. That's called our bills account. I use different accounts for lots of different things. I use automated transfers. That is how I manage money. I'm pretty on top of that. But when it comes into the bills account, out of those that account comes our mortgage, our insurances, our savings, our investments, Money goes into our children's accounts. Money goes into accounts to pay heating and electric. All of those things come out of those everyday spending monies that need to be kept aside to meet all of those bills and those automated transfers. There's a figure that then stays in that account for the everyday bills that go with a household and children and dogs and vet bills and insurances and all the things you have to pay. Once that figure is left in that bills account, I then transfer the rest of our salary money into another account. That other account is then what we use for everyday spending. So for food shopping, grocery shopping, if a pizza is ordered, if we go somewhere, if we're taking the boys to soft play or we're going swimming or anything like that, all comes out of that daily money. We then have another account linked to those accounts, which is an everyday saving type account. And that is not long term savings. That is not savings that we're worrying about what the interest rate is on them. Those are savings for if the boys need a new wardrobe, they need new clothes or we want to go for a weekend somewhere or we want to spend money on something that we didn't foresee. We keep an amount of almost working savings in that account that are used and accessed for things that come up that you just don't have the money in your everyday spending money for on a monthly basis but it's there so as you can get what it is that you need. After highlighter and contour I'm just going to put a little bit of this setting powder on and this is the Clinique setting powder. It is transparency neutral shock with my pale skin and it is it there's no real color to it it just sets your foundation and your makeup and it means I don't look so shiny so I'm just using a Dior brush that I've had for some time I could really do with new brushes I've said that so many times and I never get around to buying them or at least clean the ones I have that would be helpful. That takes care of our everyday money we then have other streams of income coming into our household and those streams of income are used to put more money into investments into savings, into different policies where monies go to. And I also have my own account and my husband has his own account. And money goes into those accounts for ourselves. And it's out of those other monies that I put money into my fun luxury savings account. And that is where I pay for my handbags and things like that. That's how I afford them. I've told you the background of how the money comes in to be able to afford them, but that's how I have the money there to spend on them. I transfer money into that at least probably on a monthly basis, but because different streams of income are not always as regular as a nine to five salary coming into your home, it could be some months that there's a couple of times, some months that there's not. It depends when they're all coming in to our savings or into our finances, and then they get dealt with. And those are normally all put in from the other streams of income. I don't put any money into my luxury handbag spending from our everyday working money, which is kept in the home, which is kept for for our family if there's money left over in that that isn't needed it's put into one of the family savings accounts rather than going into me spending handbag money because one of the things I'm very conscious of is I have a family I have two children I have a husband I have four dogs 
I have responsibilities that are not handbags. And whenever it comes to the money that comes into our household, that's our normal salaries, I don't really put too much of that to my own spending. Now, if we were in a position that we didn't have other streams of income, and that is where all of our income came from our two main salaries, then of course, some of that money would be going, if there was enough, would be going to our own accounts to allow us to do the things that we love and want to do. Because I think it's important that even though you become a family and have children, that you're still yourself and you still have your own identity and that you, if you can financially, you still have an account to be able to do the things that you want to do. My husband doesn't buy handbags, but he goes on boys trips and that's what his account is for. And the money goes into that so it's not coming out of our family money. That's a very, very privileged position that we're able to put that away out of other streams of income. And I'm just being very honest with you in this video as to how we afford things. I get that that's a very, very privileged position. And I get that that makes it a lot easier for us to put money away into those different accounts that are for ourselves. If we had, as I said earlier, our main salaries coming in and that was all of the money that was coming in, I would not be buying handbags at the level that you see because the amount that could go into that spare account, so to speak, would be much, much lesser and I would not be able to put the money towards that that I currently can. Now, I have rejigged everything this year because I am very, very set on these different financial priorities. I want to put more money into investments and savings with the interest rate. I want to pay more off our mortgage because of the interest rates and that means there's less going into those spending money so there's still money there but it's not to the level that it was and that's because sometimes you just have to have a shot of reality and look at what's happening in the world and readjust your priorities and readjust where your money is going and that's what we've had to do this year but that is how the money is there and available for me to spend on handbags because it gets put into a separate account and then doesn't come out of our family money if the money is not in that account for me to buy a specific handbag I don't buy it I don't touch, we have many other accounts where money goes for savings and investments and in children. I think when you have children, especially for me, coming the way I grew up, that's very, very important to have and that means a lot to me. I won't touch those other accounts to buy handbags with. That's just how I do it. Again, I appreciate I'm very fortunate to be able to have the money to do both so I don't have to make that choice. But for managing my money, it all comes out of that separate account. Now for eye makeup, I am using my Charlotte Tilbury palette. This one is the Luxury Palette of Pops. I really like these colours. I have used my Charlotte Tilbury Film Star Bronze and Glow, which is the bronzer and the highlighter. You can see mine's well used. I use the highlighter as underneath my eyebrow almost like an eyeshadow and now I'm going to put my base colour on which is the Luxury Palette of Pops and I am just using a brush that came from an old Urban Decay palette that I still have and still use. These are the colours and I'm using this one at the bottom corner here at the moment as my base colour. Now that I have my base colour on I have another Charlotte Tilbury palette here and I'm going to put a little bit of these purple colours. Sorry these purple colours down at the bottom of my eyelid over the base colour. That just adds a little bit of definition around my eye and then I put a little bit of a white colour in at the corner of my eye which is from the same Charlotte Tilbury highlighter. Now as I say I am no makeup guru, this is just what I do. I have been asked about this before and I quite enjoyed doing this get ready with you so let's have a go at it again. If anybody is wondering how my hair stays pretty straight I do have naturally curly hair and I sometimes will have curly hair in my videos but I discovered this. Now, this is not sponsored, I obviously bought this myself but it's Woe and it's the Dream Coat Colour Woe Supernatural Spray. I will link this down below. This is really, really good I have found for keeping my hair a little bit tamer because although my hair is curly it can be very, very frizzy and you put this on, you have to apply heat and you have to apply tension to make it take in your hair and work and keep it a bit sleeker. But it's meant to last every three to four shampoos. I use it a bit more than that, but I do think it helps keep my hair a bit less frizzy. So I will put that down below in case anybody has the same type of hair that I do. Now for some eyeliner. I love an eyeliner. <laughs> uh, I do use this one that you can't even see. It's Maybelline. I will link it down below. I'm pretty sure it's Maybelline, but I'll get which one it is and I'll link it down below. It's very inexpensive and I basically use it to the point that you can't sharpen it anymore. Now I have my eyeliner on. I have it in the waterline underneath. I always put eyeliner in there. I know I sometimes get told off about it but I always put it in there and then I have eyeliner on the top 
lid of my eye as well and that's basically my daily look and now I'm going to put mascara on. I don't use false eyelashes regardless of how many offers for sponsorships I get for false eyelashes. I don't use them. I don't know how to put them on. I would stick them halfway up my face and have glue everywhere. Unless someone does my makeup professionally and applies them, I can't do it. So I use the Max Factor 2000 calorie mascara for dramatic volume. This is not expensive either. This is not luxury level price. I think this is maybe eight or nine pounds sterling but it is so good and I just think it gives my eyelashes volume and a bit of curl and length and I just I really really like this I've used this for years and no matter what luxury one I have tried that's one of the things I've stopped buying is luxury mascaras and trying them because I keep going back to this because it's so good back to money the next way that I afford my luxury handbags is because I have been buying them for quite some time and I have built up quite a collection of handbags and even I have to admit that no one woman needs that many handbags. So I am trying to get better and one of the ways I'm able to fund new purchases is by letting go of the bags that I don't wear and selling them on. Now I'm very sentimental so this is something that I find difficult especially if I have any connection at all. Doesn't have to be a major one any connection at all to that bag, I will really struggle to let it go, really, really struggle. Um, but I'm trying to get better at that. If I don't use them and there's another bag that I really want to bring in, I'm trying to get better at letting them go. And what that does is it basically funds the purchase itself. Then it's like a cycle. You're liquidating the bags that you already have, securing the funds from those, getting the cash out of them basically, and buying the next bag. So because I have been buying for quite some time and have a body of bags there let's say it's easier for me then to make new purchases by selling one on and I'm not actually spending any more money on the bags that I'm buying and that allows me to then bring them in without any real deficit or cost to our finances. Now I have my mascara on I don't know if you'll be able to see that or not but that gives my eyes definition opens my eyes up I don't think I have eyes until I have my eye makeup on but certainly Big thing for me is mascara. I love mascara. Now, the final way, the fifth and final way that I afford luxury handbags is that when I put my mind to something, I am extremely, extremely determined. Some would say stubborn. I'm going to go with determined, but probably stubborn too. So when I decide that there's something that I'm saving for or that I'm going to buy, I am so determined that I'm going to do that. And I've always been like that. My mum will say that when I decided I was going to buy something or I wanted something, every penny that I was given, if I got birthday money, Christmas money, if I earned some extra money, I did overtime, I would save that money until I had the money to buy what I wanted to buy. And I still will do that. I am not scared of hard work. So if there's something I want to buy, I will work extra. I will do extra work to bring more money in. I will put more time into different things. I will put more resources into different things to be able to save the money for what it is that I want to buy. I'm also very, very good if there's something I want to buy. I won't waste my money on anything else. I will not be buying my lunches out. I will not be buying teas and coffees. I will not be buying makeup that I don't need. I'll not be buying things that I don't need. I will stick to that thing that I want and I will work towards that. I have a video on the other channel about how to stay motivated to save and I've always used those tips. I will be like a dog with a bone and determined to get to that thing that I want to buy and I won't waste my money on other things that I don't need that aren't necessities and I will focus on that. Then I still get money at Christmas from my mum because you're never too old for that and I still get a bit of birthday money and I will put those toward the purchases I want to make. I will keep them. There can be at times my husband would laugh there would be Christmas money from last Christmas I'm if I'm saving for something because it will go in a fund towards that and I'm a great lover of funds. I will go on about that a lot but I'm a great lover of different funds and I will use those to focus on saving for a specific goal. And if that goal is a handbag, I will put the same determination to saving for that handbag as I would have done for saving for a house deposit. Then down my cheekbones and down my nose, I have put the highlighting side of this on. And I love this little thing. I think this is a really, really, really good bronzer and highlighter set. 
now we just need lipstick. I'm still using at the minute this Dior lipstick. It's probably my favourite at the minute. It's the Rouge Dior 862 Winter Poppy Velvet. I think the colour was limited edition to last year's Mini Audrey. So I don't think you can get the exact colour, but you can get those lipsticks. I have a couple of variations that are very, very similar and I generally wear them all. Although this is the one I go to the most. I just, I just like it. And you can see it's quite worn down and it did have the Christian Dior symbol on it, but... Maylie's been using it, which is really what lipsticks are for. There we go, that is my day-to-day -day makeup look. I will link everything down below for you in the description box if you're interested in anything that I have used. I hope this financial information has answered the questions that I get. I hope it's been useful and it's been honest. It's been probably quite frank, but I hope you take it in the way that it was meant. I hope it has given you a bit more of an insight. If there is anything else though that you are interested in or anything that I haven't covered or you would like to know specifically, please do just leave me a question in the comment box and I will try to get back to that and be as open and honest as I can be. Thank you so much for watching me. Thank you for being here. Please take care and I will see you again in the next one.